this video is going to be a run through of several tips that you can use to improve your object drawing. And the goal here is to move from a beginner level into an intermediate level. The first thing you want to do is check out your corners. And your corners are going to be very important for quickly distinguishing the overall look of any given box form. As soon as you round the corners just slightly or you give the corners a little bit of flair, it becomes something different. Now, if you start to round the corners um, in an extremely large way, you're going to need a different technique. So what this is, what you're going to do is kind of create a double edge. Um, and this is for when you're rounding boxes to the point where the outer contour of the box is going to change significantly from its basic layout. So what you do is you create your arc around the corner and then you drop two different lines where you transition from the flat to the curved area. And then when you um, add in value, uh, you're going to kind of soften that edge. but in terms of the way to think about it, you can think about this as combining a flat plane, which you already know how to do because you've been doing a bunch of plane, plane drawing, with an arced plane. And if you think of it this way, it gets pretty easy because you're um, breaking down into two different components you already know how to draw. And then when you go back to do shading and lighting, you're going to just kind of curve that edge with your hatching and use uh, soft shading marks with the side of your pencil or charcoal if you're using pencil or charcoal. If you're using pen, of course, you have to use some curved hatching. Um, the next thing that you're going to work on um, is applicable to uh, a great variety of objects, but in particular, um, objects that are um, rounded, especially ceramic objects. And for this one, we're going to use uh, your your basic kind of coffee mug form. Um, most people, when they draw a coffee mug, just want to kind of draw the quick cylinder, throw a handle on there, and be done with it. But the thing that's going to improve the coffee mug is giving the um, giving the thing some thickness, right? Um, coffee mugs can be um, up to like a quarter inch thick, so when you start to give that top edge some actual dimension to it, it's going to bring a lot of character into the mug. The other component to that is that you may want to round that surface just slightly. Um, a coffee mug that breaks off at a perfectly 90 degree angle is probably going to be pretty uncomfortable to drink from. So. Um, you know, it'd hurt your lip almost. So what you can do is think of it kind of as the top half of a of a donut or a bagel, and you can round that surface off. And the way that you do that is simply by wrapping lines around the contour. Um, you can also combine it with the double edge concept and throw in an extra ellipse if you need it to help you um, create that rounding. Uh, feel, but I think the primary thing that's going to create that is these wrapping lines. And remember, don't go uh, directly to the top or bottom with a straight line. So that's going to help the uh, the mugs uh, greatly. On to the next one. Whenever you're doing something that um, is kind of built and constructed, you have to account for the way that it's constructed. So this is going to apply to a great variety of objects again, um, but we're going to use box forms because it's very clear and very easy to demonstrate. Um, but this will have to do with almost all types of, of objects. Let's say we're working with a box and it is constructed with a um, sort of front plank that you can very clearly see. And on the back side, it's got a similar plank and then it'll have um, two small planks kind of wedged within it to create the actual full form and dimension of this box. What I want you to pay attention to is the fact that there's a joint at this corner. It's not just a 
simple line, right? You'll notice that this joint has thickness. And one of the things that you can do to improve your drawings is just start paying attention to the joints. The other thing about joints is that they're fastened. So whenever you see a joint, think of how it's fastened. Is it, is it using nails, screws? Uh, do the nails have, um, are they wood filled? Or are they trying to hide the joint in some way? So you can quickly use little um, ellipses for nails to indicate not just how this thing is joined, but how it all fits together and how it's fastened. The next thing to pay attention to is kind of an extension of joints. <coughs> and that's seams. So we're going to use the example of uh, upholstered couch cushions. And again, this is all just simple box form stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a base cushion and an upper cushion. And because they're cushions, they're going to kind of be constructed boxy, but with arcs, right? So um, that's going to immediately give it a more cushiony kind of feel. Um, the next thing to pay attention to is the seams. Wherever there is a seam, that is an opportunity for you to use that seam to convey a little bit more information about um, the way that this thing bends in space and the way that it's constructed both. So um, here, the couch that, that uh, that we have has a couple of strange little seams going through the back cushion. But that's a cool opportunity when you're drawing it because that gives you a line that you can use literally inside the form. And whenever you put something inside the form, you tell a lot of information about what's going on with it. Um, that's also going to create a little shadow core um, or maybe even a cast shadow in that. And that um, helps with the depth on the um, part on the base of the cushion. Um, it's got a little inner seam and a separate panel. So it's uh, got a lot of upholstery work for these couches. Um, they must have worked really hard on it. But again, for drawing, that gives me the opportunity to put a pattern on top of this couch so that I can uh, create something that's a little bit more unique and distinctive. And I think that's kind of one of the, the strengths of paying attention to joints and seams is that you have another tool to further emphasize the distinctions that you can create. Next, we're going to, again, use simple box forms, and we're going to pay attention to dents and damage. So let's say this is a cardboard box that's like been through the ringer. Maybe it went through the, the US mail or FedEx or UPS, and it's all, um, it's been thrown around. Maybe it went through some rain, and it's all dented. So um, I like to, to begin to express that with um, straight lines at first, and then if I want to curve them, I can curve them later. One of the things to pay attention to is how the dents and damage affect the contour. So if the dents and damage don't affect the outer edge, then there's no real point in putting them in there. It's just a texture. Um, when you're drawing objects, what you're going for is structure first and how these structural changes uh, happen and can make things change. So um, then when we start to emphasize these, we can decide are these um, very sharp and linear or are they curvy and, um, and organic? And it just sort of depends on the material and the feel and the style that you wanna, that you wanna create. So here I can, I'll show you some differences. So here I'm using kind of like curved and arced hatching to kind of help express that damage as it goes in through the form. And then on the other side, I'm using some straight hatching, right? And then I just want to go back through it and just be sure that I'm really emphasizing how that contour changes. So the um, bottom's pretty simple, the sides are pretty complicated, and the top is sort of somewhere in between. There's a little bit of damage, but not a lot. If I use, if I made it too simple, it's just a standard box form. If I make it too complex, um, it kind of becomes muddy. But here it's distinctive and creates a little bit of a balance, right? And it's much more interesting than just a standard little um, box. Now, the last thing that I wanted to do is um, talk about um, 
how corners can affect the overall contour when you have multiple component planks putting something together. And I wanted to talk about uh, wood grain. And um, wood grain is a great tool to use to help convey a lot of information about the object. I'm just going to like zoom in here a little bit so that I have plenty of room to draw and you have plenty of room to see. So one of the risks about wood grain is it, it gets a little um, messy and we're going to see that happen and we'll, we'll talk about how to fix the mess. So again, we're going to use that simple plank construction where we have uh, a front and a back plank and um, planks in between kind of um, finishing off the rest of the construction. So we're then going to divide that into thirds and create planks that split thirds. You can line them all up as I've done here, or you can offset them if you want. Um, offsetting them is going to create a little bit more distinction and um, give it a little bit more of a, a handmade feel. Um, so now we've got it all subdivided. So we've got our, our big form and our medium sized forms. And now we're going to go through and round out the corners. And if these are, say, made of like two by fours, um, which would be a kind of ridiculous material for a box, but let's just say that we, we would use two by fours. Every single corner of a two by four is pretty rounded because um, of the way they mill them. They're not, um, they don't have sharp edges. Um, and so what you would do is go through to every single corner and round it out uh, slightly. And you can exaggerate the uh, rounding. Um, if you do this too small, then you, there's no real point to doing it because you can't even really see it, right? Um, you might as well just use a straight line. So go through, you know, round all the edges. Um, and then what this is also doing is it's breaking up the outer contour, right? So just by rounding out each edge and thinking of each of these as a separate, um, separate board, we're also creating an overall distinction to the uh, to the outer contour, and that's just a nice benefit that we that we get because we always want to pay attention to the outer shape and the outer contour um, because that helps with our ability to distinguish this object immediately. Um, the next stage is to go in and um, start adding some wood grain detail, and wood grain provides this amazing opportunity to um, help you turn corners. So we're going to go back to black and we're going to lay in some wood grain. I think if you can see the end grain, that is the place to start. Um, if you can't see the end grain very well, you can start with the facing grain. Um, but the, the end grain is a little bit more distinctive. It's easier to lay out. And in terms of drawing, I would exaggerate whatever that end grain is and I would change it each time so that you're, um, you're not doing the exact same pattern. Um, so the coolest thing about using wood grain is that wood grain turns the corner. Whatever grain you see on the end turns the corner onto the face. And that helps a ton with getting the depth and dimension that, that you need because now you have something that is inside the form that helps you turn that corner and um, remind you that this is a box form. So um, if you do this linearly, that's great. Um, that's just a good layout. But what happens when you turn the corner is that the um, end grain is going to be very narrow, right? It's, it's small bits of grain. But then when you turn the corner, because that's off at an angle, the facing grain is going to have width. Um, so if I were drawing with pencil, I would use the side of the pencil or side of the charcoal or whatever. Um, if you're using pen, you might want to use softer lines or get a marker out. So that way you're um, creating a nice, uh, more like painted or, or brushed on facing wood grain. Um, the other thing, too, is the value distinction in the face and grain isn't going to be as big as the value distinction on the end grain. Now, you also notice that this got really um, crowded and messy. So what I have to do is come back and just reassert the overall form and each individual uh, plank. And I can do that by just kind of bumping up some uh, 
contour line. Um, so this is where contour is becoming a tool and not an end, right? Um, the, the contour, I think, is extremely important, especially the outer contour, and, and that's going to help you um, distinguish the, sh the overall shape and make things immediately recognizable. Um, but you don't want to overemphasize the contour to the detriment of what you're trying to do with the depth. So, um, you know, the other tools you have available are shading and value, and you can use that to help you turn corners. So what you're, what you're thinking about now is you're stacking different tools on top of each other to help you create a more interesting object in a more interesting corner. So just to review, you've got a bunch of options for what to look at when you're doing um, uh, intermediate object drawing, and you're trying to go from beginner into intermediate. You've got corners, you've got the double edged, you've got thickness and rounded um, edges, you've got uh, joints and fasteners, then uh, as a corollary you've got seams, you have dents and damage, and you also have um, the way that that dents and damage affect the contour, and then you also have wood grain and the way that affects the um, the corner and the contour. Um, 